Hello everyone, how are you doing? Welcome to another video recording. So today we are going to be talking about, as you can see to the upper left of my screen, we are going to be talking about what is a smart money cube can do. This is video 18, by the way. So we are going to be talking about what is a smart money cube can do, how to spot a smart money cube can do, how to trade a smart money cube can do, whether you put your entry, whether you put your stop loss, uh, whether you put your take profits. Okay, so once again, what is a smart money cube can do, how to spot a smart money cube can do, and how to trade a smart money cube can do. Right, so this is the third video of the institutional uh, can do series we've been having where I'm teaching you my entry, uh, the three entry candles I use to take my trades in the market. Uh, the first one we discussed, which was video uh, 16, I think, yeah, video 16, I talked about uh, the mitigation candle and I explained the mitigation candle to you, how to spot mitigation candle and how to draw a mitigation candle, that, I mean, how to spot a mitigation candle and then how to trade a mitigation candle entry, stop loss, and the take profit. So where do you put your entry? Where do you put your stop loss? And where do you put your take profit? And then after that, video 17, I explain the imbalance to you, how to spot an imbalance candle and how to trade the imbalance candle. That's a second entry technique I use in the market. And then today, uh, video, video 18, I will be talking about the spam money cube can do and how to spot a small money cube can do, what does it look like in the market and how to trade a small money cube can do. So how do you take a trade based on this uh, can do? Yeah. So as you can see to the, to, uh, as you can see to the center of uh, my screen, you can see this uh, little illustration. So uh, I made this illustration quickly, so I do not have to do it on this call in order not to make the video uh, very long. But yes, this is what I want to talk about today. A uh, smart money cube candle. What does it look like? And how do you spot it? And then when you spot it, how do you take a trade uh, based of this uh, based of this candle? Right. So quickly, now, like I said, we have three institutional entry candles that I use, right? The first one is the mitigation candle. The second one is the imbalance. And the third one is the small money queue. Now, among those three, the first two are the most effective to me. Okay, so I make use of majorly, most times I make use of the imbalance and I make use of the mitigation candle. But it's just in some few cases that I make use of the meeting, uh, of the small money cube can do. That is if I do not see a, an imbalance or I do not see a mitigation can do, and I still want to take a trade, then I can take that trade based off the smart money cube can do. That's it. So now another name for small money can do, you will hear other block, you will hear institutional cube, we are all saying the same thing. So a small money cube candle can also be called. Okay, so a small money cube candle. Cube candle can also be called. Number one, you will hear people say um, order block. Okay, two, you can hear some people will say institutional cube right so other block institutional cube small money cube right the ones uh we call it here they are all as in we are all trying to say the same thing so if you hear um small money cube so a smart money cube I'm supposed to remove that so a small money cube can do can also be called one other block can do to so institutional cube can do now when i was explaining the mitigation can do to you I said the idea around that candle formation is that the institutions took out the liquidity and they need to come back to rebalance price at that candle that took out the liquidity. 
that's the idea behind the mitigation can do. Now, when I was talking about the imbalance, I said it is caused as a result of as a result of heavy orders placed in the market that resulted in price going up without creating uh, without giving the sellers opportunity to take price down before price continue to go up. Right, an example of an imbalance will be this. Right, price. Um, heavy order came in price bought all the way to the upside and i said an imbalance consists of three candles the candle that starts the imbalance the candle that creates the imbalance so if we have for example a third candle now and then the candle sold down even though the candle closed bullish or created the low but the low did not fill up like did not touch this area did not really sell down to fill up this imbalance then an imbalance will be created in the markets right that's an imbalance and how do we trade an imbalance? You wait for price to come back because smart money will come back to rebalance price. Then you can take your entry from there, right? So now the third one, which is an order block, smart money cube can do or an institutional cube. This is a pause in the overall movement of price. So how do you spot a smart money cube can do? You can spot a smart money cube can do just by looking at a series of can do together. Now you, you you look at a candle and the candle is buying. The candle creates a bullish candle and then the next candle is a bullish candle and then the next candle is a bullish candle. And then the candle after that is now a bearish candle and then the candle after the bearish candle is a bullish candle. So what you're seeing is that you're seeing a consecutive candle being printed in one direction just to see a pause in the overall movement does a candle go against the series of candle and then followed by continuation of candle. Now, from a retail standpoint, from a retail standpoint, they do call this rally base and rally, right? I'm sure you must have heard of it. You can go online, you see it. Price rally creates the base and then price rally again to the upside. Okay, but now we from uh, an institutional perspective, smart money traders, we see this as price going to the upside this is proof that there is more buyers in the market and then in this area there is a short pause in the bullish momentum so price sold down and then followed by what continuation of price to the upside now this one candle that is in between consecutive bullish candle in a buy case now this is what we refer to as a smart money cube. This is what you will see people call order block. This is what you will see people call institutional cube. Now, some people may call it, uh, may have like a very advanced meaning to it, but the idea is the same, right? When you see a consecutive bullish candle followed by a candle that is against the major move, and then after that candle closes, the continuation of that momentum continues. Now, that short pause in the overall movement of price, that candle is what I refer to as the smart money cube candle or an institutional cube candle. It is a type of institutional candle that I look out for to place my trade on. Now, the idea I believe around this candle is that number one can this type of candle they form in area of structure what do i mean by area of structure support and resistance level do you understand now exactly now this candle form at areas of structure that is one of the condition that makes institutional cube candle very valid make sure that you are looking out for this candles at area of structure now because why I'm saying this is because now, for example, let's say we have, for example, we have this area as a resistance now. Okay, I'm just gonna do this demand and supply in this area. Now, let's say we had some previous, uh, let's say we had some previous price action in the past. Now, let's say we had some previous price action here. We had candle here that touched the resistance. We had candle came down and let's say we have all of this area we've been having candles. Now, this, in itself, this area now, price came all the way to the upside now, and then this candle sold down. Now, 
mere looking at this, what do you think the institutions are trying to do here? They are trying to induce retail traders to get in, thinking that this level now is an area of resistance. Remember the retail stock, you sell resistance because you believe that price is going to reject from there. So smart money now is inducing retail traders to get in to take a sell. And then more some retail traders might not get in immediately. Some of them will want to wait for confirmation. And some of the confirmations could be if I get a bearish candle close, this can give me some kind of idea that this sell area is going to hold. Okay, and then what happened? The institutions will take price down at that structure level, and then retail traders will want to get in, believing that oh, since I've seen the candle close, I've seen the bearish candle close, this area, this structure level is going to hold. Therefore, I'm going to get in, and then they get in on the sell with a stop loss above, and then the next candle happens to be a bullish candle in this case, because at times they might be correct. Okay, at times support and resistance play out nicely. Okay, but because uh, what I'm teaching now, Smart Money Cube, the most valid ones are the ones that are at area of structure. Because what it means to me, the way I read it, the way I read it is that the institutions deceive retail traders to get in, thinking that they've seen the candle confirmation, they've seen the bearish candle close, more confirmation to sell, then they were going to take the sell and then price buy all the way to the upside. So I believe that this candle itself is a fake sell done by the institutions to, uh, to induce retail traders to get in. So therefore the institutions need to come back and close out their position that is left open in that area. That's what I believe. Might not be so, but that is the idea around it. Might not be so. There might be a different reason as to why this kind is printing, but then me just trying to give a meaning to it, I would say this is how it is, what I just explained now. Okay, so the institutions will create this candle and then buy up. So this candle itself, you will see this type of candle, you know, when you see bullish candle continuation in a bullish market, if it is a bearish condition, now if it is a sell, if it is a sell market now, all of these candles will be red, red, and then a green candle signifying sell, 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 sell. One bullish candle, then sell, sell, sell. So that bullish candle itself is an institutional order block or institutional cube or smart money cube. But the idea is that this candle is a fake sell in a buy condition. Therefore, you can look at this candle expect price to come back just like this. Now you can see price went all the way to the upside, created what liquidity, and then this candle came back. You can see this candle now. If we are to look at the candle from the open, okay, from the open to the high up there and drag to the front, you can see price came back into that candle. And then we had what the bullish play to the upside. So can you say this is an institutional cube? This is different from mitigation candle. This is different from um, imbalance. This is a smart money cube candle, and this is how to trade it. Okay, you spot the candle, wait for price to come back into that candle, and you can take the trade from there. So how do you spot a smart money cube candle? Look for consecutive candle. Look for the a candle that goes against that consecutive move and then expect a continuation of the trend. Like the trend is going to the upside, you can see bullish momentum, bullish momentum, a pause in the momentum, followed by continuation in the momentum direction. So this candle is a small manicure candle. And the most effective one is the one that is an, at an area of structure so those are the major points i want you to pick because if you're not careful you will see this kind of candle at every point in the market but just like how you can find an imbalance anywhere in the market but now do you trade every imbalance no do you trade every small money cube candle no i've given you conditions as to the ones to trade look for the can first of all it has to be in line with structure number two it is inside the trading range Number three, you've seen it at an area of structure. 
Okay, so now, how do you trade a smart money cube candle? How do we trade it? Just like an imbalance, you can either trade the imbalance, your entry can be at the open of the imbalance or at the 50% of the imbalance or at the complete view of the imbalance. Now, for a smart money cube candle, when we are looking at the entry, the entry can be at either the open or 50%. There is no close, okay? Either the open of the candle or 50% of the candle. That's it. So now in this candle is a bearish candle. Now let's go back to the anatomy of a candle. I told you that every candle has five main properties, right? I told you that every candle has five main properties. Can you remind me what it is? Don't worry, I'm going to help you. It's going to pop up on the screen now. Yeah, this is it. So every candle has five main properties. The open, the close, the low, the high, and the body. So these are the five main properties of a candle. Now, so this is a bearish candle. Where is the open going to be? The open of the candle, just like, as you can see on this uh from this image, the open of a bearish candle is above. So now this candle now, this bearish candle has the open up. So if you wanna take this trade, now your entry will be at the open of the candle, which is up here, or at the 50%. How do you get a 50%? Take the FIB and you measure the entire body from the open all the way to the close. And then you just look for 50%. And this is it, half of the candle, that's where your entry will B. Yep. So this is how to trade a smart money cube candle. So for entry, okay, for entry, your entry can either be at the open of the candle or the 50% of the candle exactly that is for the entry of the candle so your entry can either be at the open of the candle just like this or at 50 percent of the candle now when trading an institutional cube candle where should the stop loss be so for so for stop loss okay your stop loss should be at the low of the range. That's it, at the low of the range. Or because now one thing with institutional cube is that your entry can either be at the low of the range if the, if the cube candle is close to the low uh, is close to the down range, exactly. So now your stop loss, your stop loss should be at the low of the range. If the cube, okay, if the cube, okay, that is the candle itself. If the cube candle is close to the down range, that is all your stop loss can be at the low of the cube candle itself. That's it. Oh, or your stop loss. Exactly. Yes. So for the stop loss, there are two areas you can put your stop loss. The stop loss should be at the low of the range if the cube candle is close to the down range. So now if the down range is closer to where the cube form, your stop loss should just go at the down range in as much as it is below 30 pips, right? That is it. And then the second, in case, just in case the cube is not at the low, is a little bit far from, from the down range, you can put your stop loss at the low of the cube candle itself. So this is supposed to be cube E of the cube candle itself. So those are the two areas you can put your stop loss. And then for the stop loss now, so for, for TP, rather for take profit, 
All right. So your take profit, your take profit one, okay, uh, which is the first, okay, which is the first take profit should be at three times, okay, three times your risk. I'm sure you know this already. First TP is always three times what you're risking. All right, three times your risk while additional take profits areas can be at an imbalance or mitigation can do. or an institutional cube above your first TP. Above or below, okay? Above or below, depending on whatever condition. Well, below your first take, above or below your first take profit. Exactly, so additional, Exactly below. So we're just going to change this to green. So yes, this is for take profit. So for take profit, your your take profit one, which is your first take profit, should be at three times what you're risking. I've taught you risk management. You know what to do. Your first TP for uh, for this trade is going to be at three times what you're risking. Okay, that's it. Then your second TP can either be at the high. Or maybe you look for an imbalance, or you look for a, a, a mitigation candle, or you can look for an institutional cube above where you feel price will get to and could find um, difficulty breaking. And then uh, you take your final profit from there. Or also, sorry, rather, uh, your take profit area can be at the imbalance or mitigation candle or an institutional cube above or below your first take profit and also liquidity areas. Exactly. That's it. So this is a small money cube candle. It's not so hard to spot. And I've given you the idea behind it. I've told you how to trade it, where your entry should be, your stop loss should be, and where your take profit should be. That's it. So now let us go to chart examples. Let me show you. First, let me take a screen shot of this. All right, so now let us go to example. I've, uh, so we're gonna come to the orange list. I've actually seen three I wanna talk about. So the first one is on the dollar index. Okay, this is the dollar index now. Now, let's take a look at uh, the DXY. Okay, now, First of all, like I said, it has to be in line with what? Last, it has to be in line with structure. That's it. It has to be in line with structure. So now looking at this dollar index, overall, we can see that the dollar index is overall coming to the downside. So now the DXY is bearish. Okay. And now we do have equal lows in this area, this liquidity here. So by the time you're watching this recording, definitely what you can see, uh, you can see prices from the liquidity. But then if you are watch, by the time you're watching this recording, um, I'm sure it's gonna be like many months after, or probably more than a year or so. But now I want you to know that I actually called out this area. I wanted price to take out this liquidity, and it did in one of the market outlook calls we've been having. I can't remember which exactly, but then I actually called out this liquidity that the dollar index actually took out. So now this is the liquidity. Small money is attracted to areas of liquidity. Now, what can we see in this area? Now, what I can see is that we had what? Some consecutive sales. First sell, second sell, third sell, even a fourth sell. Yeah. Now, price gave us this one bullish candle followed by what consecutive bullish candle. You've seen it now? So this in itself 
is a smart money cube. This is an institutional cube. This is an order block. This is a smart money cube candle. Now, price rallied, like price sold down, and then price came back up where into the candle. And then what happened? We can see the response price gave to the downside. Now, if we are to align everything together, structure bearish. Where is going to be our range? I have the range up here and I have the range down here. Now, am I selling at a premium area or I'm selling at a discount? So I'm going to take my FIB, which I'm going to be explaining next to you in video 19. We're going to be talking about the uh, Fibonacci, I believe. Exactly. So now, measure my feet from the swing high all the way to this low down here now. Okay. Now, I am selling definitely above 50%. So above 50% is premium for me. I'm going to be teaching you that in video 19. Okay. So sorry, I should have actually taught it first, but uh, there was a mix up in the, when I was creating the course. I'm sorry about that. Okay. So now this itself, can you see consecutive bearish candle, bullish candle, and then bearish candle. So why should we have this candle printed when we have consecutive bullish candle? So to me, I feel, and look at this, look at this. This is happening at an area of what? At an area of structure. We had what? In this area, we had a demand. This is a support. We had support. We had resistance. And look at this. It is happening at an area of support and resistance. Just look at this. This area, we had demand, support, support, resistance, support. See? This is the institutions trying to induce retail traders to get in, thinking that this support level is going to hold. And it didn't because sell, sell, sell. And then price took out the liquidity below this area, even this one year, and then price sold down. So now how do you trade it now? Entry can either be at the open, which is this. Open is here. Or at 50%, uh, give or take 50% can be here. And look at this. Sell. Can either place a sell here or place a sell at 50 percent stop loss can either go at this area here that is the eye of the candle or at the top range here and then look at what happened price played out and then it came for the liquidity to the downside so this is how you can trade an institutional cube a smart money cube or a block candle they're all the same that's it. So this is one example. Now, the second example I want to show you is on Euro GBP. Now, Euro GBP, this is it here. Look at this. Look at this. This is an area of what structure? We had some what? Support. We had some support. We had some resistance. And then what happened? We had a bullish candle. We had a bearish candle and then we had support like and then we had what bullish 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 so why should we have this bearish candle as a matter of fact inside the structure level this is the institutions trying to induce retail traders to get in believing that the, the, the price is going to hold and price is going to sell down but instead what happened price bought all the way to the upside so when you see the candle you have a trade idea. What is the structure? We are bullish. Are you high? This is the top down range, top range. Wait for price to give us a higher low. Look at this. Is it not too precise? If you want to play the open, yeah, or 50%, yeah. Stop loss can be yeah, or at the low of the candle. Look at the response we have to present date. It's playing out. That's it. The most effective order block I like to play is the one that is at an area of structure. Don't forget that. The most effective one you want to play is the one that is happening at an area of structure. That's it. Okay. Now, the third example is going to be USD Chef. Now, USD Chef. Now, I was looking at this and 
already you can spot a lot of other blocks here you can spot a lot of smart money cube here like this is one sell sell bullish sell 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 this is one then we have another one sell sell bullish sell sell this is one also and then price came all the way to the downside but then i was looking at this and then price came all the way to the upside back now if i'm to look let us look at this now looking at this spam money cube here yeah? now price came into that area and that was where price rejected from now like i said this is the least out of the three i use when i'm looking for trade ideas but it is still effective when we add it to what when we had other confluences to hit. Look at this now. This was an area of what? A very strong level of support and resistance. Go all the way far back. You can see this price board, price board, price board. And then coming back to that same area again, price board, price board, and then price board, price board. So now this candle is an institutional cube spam money cube forming at a very valid area of structure now the flow the other flow is to the upside the directional bias is to the downside rather the down the other flow is to the downside so now price gave us a little pause you know creating this lower low went up gave us a lower high where is it for me at inside this institutional spam money cube also at an area of structure if you want to play the open 50 percent and then look at the response price gave uh going to the downside so this is it so now just like i'm spotting it on the daily you can also spot it on the lower time frame four hours one hour 30 minutes now if you spot it on the daily time frame now you might not be able to take the trade on the daily time frame because the stop loss is going to be too big so what you uh what i would suggest you do is mark out that area and then wait for price to come into that area and then look for some kind of distribution if you want to sell or accumulation if you want to buy and then uh what i mean by distribution and accumulation is simply wait for break of structure in the direction you want to take your trade exactly so that is it if you have any question as regards this smart money cube, please feel free to send uh, me a message or better still send your message to the question group. And then when I see it, I will attend uh, to you. So now your homework exercise, your homework exercise will be The homework exercise identify two for each okay so what i'm saying what i mean is two bullish two bearish conditions so you look for two buy smart money cube candle and two self smart money cube candle so identify two for each an example of a smart money cube that is also in line with structure levels. So that is it, this is assignment. It's very simple. Okay, identify two for each. An example of a smart money cube candle that is also in line with structure level. That's it, so one of it could be this. You can say this is a bearish candle. So with, um, you're gonna put the cell, you wanna take this, cell can be at the open of the candle stop loss can be had a high now in this case you cannot put your stop loss way up here right because it will not be too smart uh to do that definitely so that is why you have two areas to put your stop loss so this is it if you have any question please feel free to send your question to the question group when i see that we attend to it so uh that's going to be all for me you have an amazing day bye-bye